This is a vlog all about my race weekend at Croft. And it went rather well. Hey. Hi, my name is Asquatme. I like endurance racing, and this is the vlog about when I raced in the Rose Sports, which is a 45 minute race with a mandatory one minute pit stop where you can swap drivers if you want. This isn't my first time racing in the Rose Sports. I've raced in the Rose Sports back at Cadwell where I won this trophy. Don't know if I've mentioned it before. Jokes, because I always mention it. Right, let's get back on with the video. For this Rose Sports race, I was teaming up with my boyfriend, Pip Hammond, for the first time. This was a relationship test and it could make or break us. It's the day before race day, I'm off to work and then I'm going straight to Pip's parents, jumping in the camper van. Pip and his parents will already be there, set up, ready and going and then I just need to jump in and then we're off to Croft. Once we arrived at the circuit, it was time to get the car off the trailer and get unpacking. I know, I was just coming to tell you. Try that again. really embarrassing. Disclaimer, the car was cold, there's no fancy anti-stabilizer on this car and the mat on the car makes it hard to drive at low revs. Also the rev counter is hand drawn so you don't know what revs you're actually doing. Racing driver excuse over. So after a big group of lads had a good chuckle at me stalling the car as I was getting it off, one actually said that would be good for a YouTube video. Yes mate, YouTube loves a good stall drama. So the next stage was the car prep stage. Because we hadn't raced at the road sports before, we had a lot of stickers that are mandatory for the race to put on the car. One of which was a window strip, which legitimately took over half the screen. It was not meant for a small box scene over. So we had to get really creative and artsy and crafty and cut this sticker so it was still legible but it wouldn't take up half the screen. I mean, it took up a third, but like a third, two thirds is better than a half to see out of. There was a lot of adjustment of the seat. Because this was a road sports race and we were changing drivers, there was no time to adjust the seat. It's not on rollers, it's a fixed bolt seat. So we had to get the seat so it was comfortable for me, but also comfortable for Pip. And although we have pretty similar leg lengths, I like to sit really close to the wheel and Pip likes to sit really laid back. So there was a lot of adjusting, a lot of cushions to pad me up and put me in the right position like a booster seat but we had to get the pads in the correct place so that I was really comfortable it wasn't comfortable but I managed we also had a quick test to see how long it would take to change the driver over you got the wheel alignment fluids just checking everything's okay with the wheel alignment there is no fancy tools here just a cheap wheel alignment that has seen much better days the bubble is now just one big bubble making it quite inaccurate but it'll be right mate with all that done it was time for tea and a quick track walk race day woke up nice and early there's no scrutineering that's done all online these days had my weetabix chatted through the track one last time with pip i need to visualize and have the map and write down the gears to be in i don't call the corners by the names but just by the numbers qualifying so for qualifying you've got to do a mandatory three laps 
in order to start the race. Each driver had to do three laps. So Pip went out, did his three laps, and then he came in so that I got a good long time to feel really comfortable in the seat and get used to driving. Pip's a lot more experienced than I am at driving, so I needed a lot more practice and time getting used to all the faster cars because in road sports, we're in the bottom class, so we're in class D and it was quite intimidating. And it takes me quite a long time to get used to it. So he went out, bombed out, did a good lap, signaled, maneuvered, came in. I leapt in the car, drove out, and I forgot that he'd switched the indicator on. In my defense, there's, it, it was really bright. It's a stupid place. I couldn't quite see it. You can't hear an indication. It's not self-canceling. I just was oblivious on the small blinking light on the dash, yeah. So embarrassing. Like, you can see me come through the pits and it's a really good shot. And it's just so embarrassing because I've got the blinkers on. It's so embarrassing. I, I can't watch it back. Anyway, in qualifying, we got pulled over and I thought we'd done something wrong, but because Pip had gone really fast in qualifying, he put us on pole in our class, which meant that we got weighed so that just to check that we were in the right class because it's a weight to power ratio class. When we were pulled over, somebody that had driven behind me for the last lap came over and said that he thought there was a problem with the rear wheel bearing. I didn't feel it when I was necessarily on the track. It was a bit square me at the back. It was a bit jellyfied, but it, it didn't, on the track, I, I was so oblivious. I was just so stressed out. I was like, I, I'm not very good at qualifying. So I didn't really feel it that much although you could definitely see that it was coming off and it was driving to the be weighed, it felt really wobbly. I, I've never driven back to where we were parked from the way bridge so delicately. It was a slow drive, I thought it was bad. So we immediately got on. It was really good that the guy came to tell us because I might not have noticed that it was so bad, but we wouldn't have known to get on it immediately. And and at that point, from that moment on, time was critical. So we had about two hours to the race itself, which was fine. We, luckily we had the parts or we had some spare parts that we could put on. So we got straight to it. It was all kind of, you know, a bit relaxed, a bit jokey at first. And then we saw that the, it had just welded itself together and it was so hard to get off. The wheel bearing had fully gone hammers and the grinders came out and then it got serious. I got a little bit worried when it was 45 minutes to the race. It was getting it, cutting it fine. Luckily, Pip is an expert at Novas and I just was helping him out wherever I could to just trying to leave him be, not disturb him too much. And he he was focused, he was fully focused, but it, it was getting it was getting pretty dicey. We didn't have another drive shaft and Pip borrowed a grinder. So when we came to put the new one on, we had to debear it. The only thing we could find to debear it was a nail file but that didn't work so the grinder came out again we got the new bearing all lubed up and struggled to put it on so we had to take the damper off quickly and then reassemble it it all got it into a bit of a mess it got really dramatic down to the wire we literally finished it put all the hob the wheel back on literally ran to get changed got changed and i was being called and i was just leapt in the car and just went just, just went to the assembly area so it was a really hot day then it was race time so the strategy for this race i was going first then pip was going i had to do the start i'm not great at start but all i had to do was hang on to the back this was like minimum i just need to keep them in my sights pip had placed me because it had gone on pip's qualifying time it had placed me in a quite a good place i was focused i had to get my elbows out keep the cars behind me and just concentrate on going so i got an amazing start i was i was elbows out i was the racing driver screen came down and I was like, Rah! I was so pleased with my start and the fact that I kept some cars behind me. I punched the, I came round and I hadn't even finished crossing the start line and I punched the air to show Pip that I was like, yeah, it was not an amazing start. Like, and I was like, I hadn't even done a corner. I, I, I was celebrating. I, I'd 
barely passed the straight. I barely passed the start line and I was celebrating because I was proud of that start. Like race could have ended there and I would have been proud. Got my elbows out, was fighting all the way. I was getting tired and tired and I let one slip past and I let another one slip past and I was like, oh no, pulled in to the pits. Now this, the pits is where you can, you can get time. You've got to have a mandatory pit stop. And if you time it down, you can claw back seconds because somebody else might have a really bad pit stop. They might add 10 seconds on. This is where the strategy comes out. We had a, a bad pit stop. <laughs> This pit stop was again one of those pit stops that I can't, I can't look back. It's so cringy and embarrassing, this pit stop. It's just all over the place. You've got to pull in at a certain angle. You can't reverse in the pit lane. There's all these sort of rules. I kind of knew where pit was going. I raced, I, you've got to be at a certain speed in the pit lane. I was trying to concentrate on the speed that I was going at. I was going, I saw pit, I, I got there, I stopped. I was like, timer started, that's great, that's it. That's all I've got to do. And then pit was like, come forwards. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he was signaling that there was an access gate that I parked in front of, but I, I just, was a hot mess. I was steamed up. I was just flapping. I've never heard Pip shout quite so aggressively as he did to tell me to move forwards. It's a little bit scary to watch back. <laughs> If we weren't even entirely sure how long the pit stop was supposed to be. So then Pip took over and he did amazingly well. He, I think when I got out, we were possibly third in class. I think I'd hung on, I, I hung on to second for quite a while, but I think I then dropped to third in class when he got in the car. And as I say, Pip is a great driver and he managed to get us back up to first in class. I'm in the pit lane trying to read the live timings, trying to work out where we are. The race ends, I'm kind of like, yay, I think we got first. And uh, I was like, okay, you know, I'll just wait around to make sure Pip comes in. So I was waiting around and I was like, I, can't. I, was like, I can't see him, I, I can't see him. And then I realized that he'd parked up at the top of the pit lane. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. There's a problem. So then I ran, I do not run. I was <laughs> like, oh no. So I ran and I was like, oh, is there a problem? And he's like, no, cause we were first in class. We get interviewed. And I was like, what? I, I was like, I've not been interviewed before. This is amazing. I'm a YouTuber. I'm going to know exactly what to say. And it's, I'm going to look fabulous. Again, what is this? What was this race? It was, it was, I, I got too excited. I didn't know I was going to get one of those little garlandy ring things. I, I was just really excited. I don't think I answered a question. Like I was really scared. Cause I mean, the Nova's like the Nova, it's a bit intimidating, but I got my elbows out and I was like, yeah. The interviewer asked me a question and I, didn't answer it. I didn't make a sentence. I did weird hand movements. Uh, I just oh, like, it makes me laugh watching that back. It's, it's <laughs> just, just what is this? <laughs> So that was it. Now you know how I got this trophy. If you like this video and you want to show me some love, drop a like in the description. If you're somebody that likes driving, fixing or racing classic cars, think about subscribing. See you next time. This is my first race win. So.